Okay, so the class will be recorded. Today we are meeting for learning and information technology, and we will cover around five chapters. We will cover application and system software, input and output devices. We will cover the system unit, and we will see some example of secondary storage. Uh, regard the application software, we will distinguish between the general purpose application, which is uh, basically the different types of application softwares we have. We will distinguish between the general purpose application. Um, we will describe the different uh, general purpose application like Word processor, like the spreadsheet, presentation, and database management system. Then also we will identify uh, some of a specialized application, why uh, these applications are there and how uh, it can be used, who can use it. Then uh, we will describe a graphics program. So not long ago, trained specialists were required to perform many operations such as market analysis, calculation of a project sales or designing a graphic. So basically, these are some of the tasks that we can use it, use the computer to perform it. Um, analyzing the market, uh, calculating uh, sales in a project or designing a graphics, all these need some people who know how to perform these tasks by using the application, by using the computer. So how they can perform it, what they need. You can do all these tasks today and many other with a personal computer and the appropriate application software. So basically these people who will do these tasks, all they need is a computer and an application that help them to finish this task. This application is called application software. So we can describe and define the application software as end user software, which is used by the people, the user, and is used to accomplish a variety of tasks. So application software help us, the user, to finish our task. There are three main categories of application software. There is the general purpose for all the people, there is a specialized application for people who are interested in performing a specific task. So not general for all. They need some people who only interest in that application. And we have mobile application, which is run on mobile. So general purpose application, we have variety of these application like word processor like a uh, PowerPoint, like Access. So if we want to count how many one of us used Word, we I will find all of us used Word before. But if I ask, for example, how many one of us used Microsoft Access before, I can find some of the people who was uh, interested in the subject before and used the application before. So um, these all types of general purpose application, Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, uh, Access, so all of these basically general purpose application. Uh, in Word, it help us to do many of the tasks like creating the document, editing existing document, save the document and uh, print and format box text based document. Uh, so we can find writers uh, who never used computer before. They only know Word and um, they know how to perform uh, writing, uh, how to edit the text, how to start a new paragraph. So they know only the skills required to deal with Word processors or writing some a document. We have also spreadsheet like Excel, like Microsoft Excel, which is basically spreadsheet. Um, spreadsheet programs help us to do some calculation, uh, to organize numbers, 
so we can find people who are interested to do some calculation or uh, they need to analyze or represent some uh, numeric data in a graphics. They have to learn Excel and use it. So we could found many people uh, used Excel before. It helped us to organize, analyze, and do some uh, graphic on uh, numeric data, like representing the budget, representing the financial report. Then we have also uh, presentation graphics, which is like PowerPoint. It helped us to create a presentation. Uh, presentation basically combined between uh, text and image and in, can include videos. So it helps us to uh, merge all different types of media together to represent attractive, uh, interesting uh, presentation. Uh, one type of this application in Microsoft Word. Then one also uh, example of application software is database management system which is basically programs uh, help us to create uh, databases. Databases also help us to manage a huge amount of data. Uh, it it helps us to store all this data in a structured way and help us later to retrieve this data based on our interest. Whereas on the other hand, we have specialized application so not all the people interest to use it uh, only for a group of people who is interest to learn something like for example the uh, engineers the engineers or the designer engineers uh, they use some specific program in computer specific application software specialized application help them to design for example the uh, houses uh, the buildings um, the uh, different uh, hardware um, in uh, industry. They have uh, some also engineers who design uh, the different equipment there. So they have to use some specialized application, uh, help them in drawing. Uh, so we can find not all of us or not the majority of the computer uh, users have to learn this type of application like the 3D, for example, drawing. So a specialized application used within only specific professions. These can be like a graphics program, like for example, we could have Aduba in design for desktop publishing a program. It helps uh, in creating, for example, the newspaper, the magazines, uh, like the publishers, like um, posters, like um, wedding invitation cards, uh, birthday cards. So these are types of publisher program, uh, which is not all the people have uh, to use it. Only for the people who wants to create specific things. We could also have Adobe Photoshop, which help in uh, edit image. We could have also Adobe Illustrator. It helps to create animated pictures. Uh, this is called illustration programs. And we could have also Windows Live Movie Makers. It helps us to create uh, videos, uh, to edit videos, make clips together, uh, join, put them together. So we could use application like Windows Live Movie Maker. For any application, there is something called user interface. So basically the user interface is your entrance to interact with the application. Uh, it is the part of the application help you to use the application to control, to interact with the program. Most general purpose application, um, you can interact with it by using the mouse and also uh, interacting with the GUI, which is basically the graphical user interface, including the different buttons, different uh, menu there. So all this called uh, GUI element, which is a graphical user interface. So GUI basically will display elements, a graphical element, like an icon. So we could have, for example, the drop down menu, the symbol icon in uh, like the scissors, like the paste, uh, like the brush inward. So all these icons represent 
command that by clicking on it, it will execute for you some uh, command. Uh, these basically uh, graphical elements help you to interact with the application. The mouse will uh, help you to point on a specific point on the screen, so it helps us to select item like, for example, icons. And also an application, we have Windows. We always hear Windows. Uh, so Windows an application basically is the rectangle area that we deal with it, that represent the application. Uh, we could have more than one window open. So we could arrange also our windows in more than um, one view. So the window basically is the rectangle open, uh, which has a three control, which is close, minimize, and maximize. This is uh, one window. Uh, the window can contain an open document. It can contain an open program or a running program, or it can contain a note. So we could have in Windows more than one window open, and uh, we could have it uh, viewed and displayed on our screen all in one time. Uh, regard the system software. System software, the opposite from the application software, is the part of application that is uh, mandatory to run your computer. Uh, so without system software, basically you will have only keyboard and only screen, but died computer. You need system software to make your computer alive. Uh, so regard the system software, we will uh, describe the difference between it and between the application software. We will try to identify the main uh, four types of system software program. Uh, we will explain the basic functions, features, and categories of operating system. Then also we will compare between uh, the operating system in mobile, like iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. We will compare between the different desktop operating systems, like Windows, Macintosh, Unix, Linux, and uh, virtualized operating system. Also, we will explain uh, the purpose of having utilities and utility suit. And also we will identify the four most essential utilities and also we will describe Windows utility program. As I said, system software basically is the application uh, required to make your computer alive. Application software help you to perform tasks, but system software help you to make your computer run, like Windows, like um, Apple system. So the system software will work with the end user. Uh, it will guide the applications about how to run and uh, how the hardware installed in your computer is supposed to be operated together. Whereas um, the system software is not one program that will do all these things together. It is collection of programs that work together and it can handle hundreds of technical details with little or no, no user intervention. So the user here in the system software doesn't tell the program how to open a program or how to open uh, a document and a program together or how to display uh, two windows together. It's just give the command without, uh, without realizing what is behind this command. Uh, there is four types of programs uh, under the system software. We could have operating system like Windows, like iOS, like Android and phone. Um, so operating system will manage all the resources available on the computer, like the screen, the keyboard, the mouse, the printer, and it will provide for the user an interface and the application that he needs to use it to perform his task. We could have also utilities. Utilities is 
program required for the operating system to perform a specific task uh, help the operating system to manage its resources. Like, for example, we could have utilities to control uh, the viruses or the harmful application. Uh, we could have utilities to um, prevent hackers from uh, entering our system. We could have utilities, for example, to manage the time that we sit on a specific program. All these help the operating system to uh, finish its task or support its uh, tasks. Uh, we have also some of the system software like the device driver. Device driver basically is a program help the external devices like mouse, like uh, printers to work with your computer. So it is allow particular input or output devices to communicate with the rest of your computer system. Like if you want to install a keyboard or if you want to install a new printer, then you need to install the driver for that printer to make it work with your computer. Also, we have language translator. Language translator, not from English to Arabic or the opposite way, but from um, the program language to the machine language. So it will convert and translate the instruction uh, that perform the application or represent the application uh, into the language that the computer is understand and then can execute the different tasks. So uh, we call them the compiler and the interpreter. So these language translator translate the application from its instruction from the program language used to write that program to the machine language that is understandable by your computer, which is by basically the binary code zero and one. Um, the operating system basically is the very mo most important application installed on your computer, like Windows 10, like Windows XP, like Windows Vista, like uh, Macintosh operating system. So this is the operating system that will uh, make your work uh, easy or how to interact basically with the uh, applications later in your computer. So an operating system basically is collection of programs, handle technical tasks related to using computer. It is the most important, the most important application in your program, in your computer. Without having running application operating system in your computer, then you can't use basically your computer. So we have an example like Windows 10 and Macintosh operating system. Your operating system will store your files, your data and your programs. Um, your, it will store your data and your programs inside files and folders. Files basically we need the application software to uh, the application software to run it like Microsoft uh, Word files like uh, we could have Word files, uh, PowerPoint files, we could have uh, image files. So these are called files. It helps us to uh, files used to store data and the programs. Whereas folders help us to organize our files. So we could have, for example, folder for uh, Arab Open University uh, for the uh, for the different courses, TU170, M365. Uh, so we could have different folders help us to organize our stored files. So a folder can contain subfolders also. We could have a folder inside the other folders. Uh, basically, the folder is the yellow uh, representing a folder. Then we have files representing the uh, application files like Word, uh, image, uh, sound, all these are called files. Um, 
We could have embedded operating system uh, come inside the device, uh, also known as real-time operating system and RTOS, real-time operating system. Uh, the embedded operating system will be stored or embedded inside a device. Like the operating system in a smartwatch, it's embedded inside the smartwatch. Um, the operating system, uh, the embedded operating system, control the smartwatch, uh, control the smartphone, um, like the video game system, uh, thousands of other small electronic devices. So we could have it embedded inside the small devices. We could have also a standalone operating system uh, that the one you can have it on CD or in a flash memory, then you can install it in different devices. So in this way, it's called desktop operating system. It control a single desktop or laptop computer. So each computer will have a supporting operating system. And basically, it will be the operating system will be inside the hard disk of the computer. Like if we have Windows 10 or Macintosh operating system. Also, we could have network operating system. So basically, all the users will have only the hardware, only the screen and the keyboard, only the interface to interact with uh, the application system, whereas the operating system itself is stored inside a server. All, uh, all of us is using the same operating system and installed in the network. So this one is used to control and coordinate computers that are networked or linked together. So basically there is no uh, individual operating system stored inside the computer, but they use the uh, operating system installed inside a server, like Linux, Windows Server and Unix. For input and output, uh, we will define what is input. Um, let me see here. I think I have to admit people. Okay. Sorry. We will define input, then we will describe a uh, keyboard entry in including types and features of keyboard. We will identify different pointing device, including game controller and the stylus. And uh, we will describe scanning device like uh, optical scanner, RFID reader and recognition devices. Uh, we will recognize image capturing and audio input device. We will define what is output and uh, distinguish between different monitors, which is basically screen. Uh, also, we will define printing features and type, including uh, inkjet and the cloud printing. So we we'll distinguish between different printers, and uh, we will recognize between different audio and video devices, like including the portable media devices. So, if I ask you, what is input? Input basically anything you enter to your computer. To enter some data to your computer, you need a device like the keyboard, like the mouse. It helps you to give command and instruction to your computer how you want the work to be done. So input is any data or instruction used by a computer. You need a device to input this data. Uh, input devices are hardware used to translate words, numbers, sounds, image, gestures that people understand into a form that your computer needs to understand, then process the data. So most of the input devices that we use it to insert data to computer, the mouse, the keyboard, uh, scanner, um, image capturing like camera and a microphone. So keyboard, like the one we have it in our laptop or on our computer, 
a pointing device like mouse or the pen or the touch screen. A scanning device, the one translate a hard copy paper uh, to image inside the computer, like optical scanner and card readers. Image capturing device uh, like a camera, digital camera and webcam. Audio input device like the microphone. So this is the different image. We can find here keyboard and uh, this one is a scanner. Uh, this one is camera, so we can take pictures, then uh, take the uh, memory from the camera and put it inside the computer to edit the pictures, the one we take it uh, by using the camera. And this one is the mouse. So these are some of the examples of input devices. The output is the opposite things. So output devices used to uh, extract the data from the computer to a format uh, that the user is understand it. Like the screen, which is the main uh, output device. Uh, it show you the uh, screen, it show you the application. So we could have uh, the screen and also uh, screen is called monitors. Also, we could have printers. The printers basically is used to print the documents, to print the image. Uh, also, we could have the audio output device like the uh, speakers. So we could have speakers will translate the uh, audio files uh, inside and the sound files from our computer to a sound that we can understand it. So if we want to define the output process, it's basically processing data or information from uh, zero and one shape to something the human can understand. Like uh, the form that we can understand it, like text, like graphics, photos, video and video. So the output device basically will translate the information that has been proceed by system unit into a form that a human can understand. Um, we said screen basically is another name for monitor, which is the main important uh, output device. Uh, there are many types of monitors. Uh, there is the flat panel monitors, which is a flat screen. We could have the curved monitor, which is uh, not flat, curved. Uh, also, we have e-box reader. It helps us to read only books. We could have digital or interactive whiteboard, uh, the one used in education to interact with. We could have ultra high definition television and we could have digital projectors. So these are some type of monitors. This is the flat that uh, like uh, TV like most of our TV today. Then we have the curved monitor also. This is a smart TV with a uh, curved screen. E-book reader only for reading book. Uh, it's a small, you can hold it in your uh, hand. And digital whiteboard uh, used to interact uh, with uh, the text there. And uh, text and image and uh, basically uh, easy to uh, point, easy to uh, right. Then we have the 3D uh, UHD TV, which is uh, ultra high definition, and we have the projector help us to uh, represent an image from a computer to a wall, for example. Whereas in the printer, uh, the main types of a printer is to have the printer that one uh, that use ink to print an output. So this is the inkjet printer. It used ink. Where we have also a laser printer. Laser printer uh, used to uh, print a huge amount of uh, documents. Um, it used laser technique to print uh, documents. It's faster. Um, uh, the quality of the print is high, but if you want to use, uh, for example, if you want to print image or pictures, it's best to use uh, ink printer. 
And also we have the 3D printers help us to print 3D objects like uh, the earth here uh, inside it. So if you want to print, uh, for example, a package or um, uh, a box, then the best things to perform this is by using 3D printers. Uh, audio output device, the most important one is uh, to translate sound to uh, to translate audio files to sound is to use either speaker or uh, headphone, the one we wear it on our head. Then we have the system unit, the system unit. We will distinguish between uh, the five basic types of system unit. Then also we will describe the main component of a system unit. What a system unit is the container having all the electronic devices inside your computer, uh, like the small ships representing the memory, uh, like the motherboard, uh, like the fan. So all this basically exists inside the system unit. So it's like house have all the small devices, the small uh, ships that will make your computer run uh, inside it. So this is called the system unit. It has the most of electronic components that make up a computer system. Uh, we could have five types of personal computers, the desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone, and wearable computers. Each has unique type of system unit. So each one of this will represent the house to hold all the small devices in different way. For the desktop, as you can see, uh, the system unit is big, so we could have big electronic devices inside it, big motherboard, big hard disk, big uh, CPU. So in desktop computer, we could enhance the performance of our computer based on uh, uh, the type and the quality and uh, uh, the features of uh, the small ships inside it. A desktop computer considered the most powerful type of personal computer because we can modify it, we can uh, make it better most desktop have their system unit in separate case that contain the system electronic components and selected secondary storage devices. So we could have not only the files stored in our computer, but we could connect it with a flash memory. We could connect it with extra uh, mouse. We could connect it with the uh, two printers. We could connect it with the uh, extra keyboard. So we could include more than one device also to our desktop computer. Input and output device such as mouse, keyboard, monitor and uh, are located outside the system unit, but they are connected with it by using the wire and uh, the boards there by using USB port and uh, memory slots. Um, now we have also uh, some of the uh, computers which have the system unit embedded with the screen, like uh, the new laptops here, like Apple iMac. So they have the monitor and the system unit uh, installed together or worked together in the same case. This type of system units is called all-in-one. Um, you, you basically, the big system unit, the separate system unit, uh, we have to place it on a table or in a desk, either horizontally or vertically. If uh, we have to put it on the table. So if it is vertically uh, put on a table, we will call it tower unit. And if it is, um, and if it is our tower computer, 
this is if it is uh, vertically. So we can also uh, turn it around to place it horizontally on a table. A uh, laptop, the system unit will be uh, on the base of our laptop. So it is not powerful as desktop because there is some limitation regard how many external device that you can connect it to your computers. But also it has some features because it is portable, it's small, so it's easy to be um, moved from a place to another, not like the uh, desktop computer, which it has to be placed on uh, a specific office or a specific uh, home. So in laptop, the system unit housed with selected secondary storage device and input device, like keyboard and pointing device. There are uh, some of a specialized laptop, so we could have, for example, this is two in one laptop, it can work as laptop and as tablet. We could have a gaming laptop, which is basically have a, a high uh, graphics representation. So basically it's very quick, uh, represent, it can, um, it can handle a lot of operation and very uh, fast um, and very quick time. So it is faster than normal computer. And we could have the uh, ultra book computers, which is called also mini notebook. The mini notebook is lighter than normal laptop. Um, usually it doesn't have a board uh, for, um, there is some limitation in the type of ports. Uh, like it could have, for example, only one USB board or um, only now, uh, C type board. So there is some limitation on uh, the number of devices that you can connect it to your computer, the uh, Ultrabook. But on the other hand, it is lighter, it's a smaller, uh, it has the same features of a uh, normal laptop. And basically, uh, there is uh, yani the main difference between an Ultrabook with laptop and normal uh, laptop. There is no CD driver uh, with it, so you can't play CD directly to your Ultrabook. You have to have an uh, external uh, CD driver. Uh, tablet. Tablet basically is a newest and uh, one of the most popular type of computer. Uh, they are thin. Um, embed their keyboards with the monitor, so it's touch screen. A uh, slab that is almost all monitor with the system unit located behind the monitor. So we have the system units together with the screen. Uh, tablets usually smaller, lighter, and um, less powerful. So you can't do uh, all the tasks that you are able to do it on uh, by using laptop. Tablet does not have a standard keyboard, but uh, now they start to uh, uh, yeah. they start to invent some external uh, laptop that you can just place your screen, tablet screen, on the keyboard, and then it can uh, connect with the tablet by using Bluetooth, for example. Uh, so most tablets use virtual keyboard uh, that appear on the screen and uh, you can touch the keyboard on the screen to interact with your tablet. And there is also many tablet, type of tablet with a smaller screen. They don't have all the functionality of the bigger tablet, but they are easier to, uh, to transport in the bucket and Purpose. Uh, so, purse. Uh, so it's mo most basically used for either watching or gaming or uh, reading small books. So you can uh, do creative work by using mini tablet. Uh, then we have phones, smartphones also. Smartphones have their system units embedded inside it behind the screen. Um, they are powerful because uh, you can do uh, mostly the same things now, uh, the same 
applications that you can do it uh, in your computer, you can do it in your phone, but the application will run in your phone basically is not functioning uh, all the features as the uh, computer version. So they greatly extend the capability of cell phone by providing com uh, computing power. So it has memory, it has a processor, it has hard disk, um, they can include another features with phones like camera, microphone, speakers, uh, you can watch videos, so you can do everything, but not as the same capability as if you are using computer. Uh, you can connect it with the internet, and um, this is basically why it is uh, more expensive. Uh, so you can compare the prices of phones uh, with the uh, prices of laptops, and which one is more more expensive. Their system unit is located behind the display screen, so everything um, inside phone is supposed to be small. Uh, as much as the phone is powerful, then uh, the prices will be more expensive. Then we have also the wearable computer like the smartwatch and activity tracker. Uh, it's one of the first elementary steps of IoT. IoT basically Internet of Things. Uh, the different uh, components and devices in our houses that can have connect connection to the internet and we can interact with it by using the internet like smart watch, like the uh, washing machine, like the AC, like uh, the car. So all these devices now, all this hardware, all these electronic devices now, if it can have a computer inside it, it has memory, it has a connection, uh, it has a processor, then it has embedded computers on a ship inside it. Um, usually it's a small, uh, less powerful than a smartphone. Uh, it can do only some uh, kind of task. Okay. So personal computers come in a variety of different size, shapes, and capabilities. They share similar components. They have some system board. Uh, they have microprocessor, very small processor. They have memory. Then uh, in chapter 11, we will cover the secondary storage. Uh, we, we, we will distinguish between what's the primary, what is secondary storage. We will identify the important characteristics of any secondary storage, including media, capacity, storage device, and access speed. So we will distinguish between them. And uh, we will describe uh, hard disk letter, tracker, track sector, cylinder, and head crash. We will compare between internal and external hard drive. Um, we will compare the performance including this caching, RAID, file compression, and file decompression. Also, we will define the optical storage, including compact disk, digital versatile disk, and the Blu-ray disk. We will define solid-state storage, including solid-state driver, flash memory, USB, and we will understand or we will define what is the cloud storage and the cloud storage service. You can see here in the picture this two ships. These two ships represent the memory. Memory, which is, uh, if you heard about it, it's called RAM. So for any computer, we need RAM to allow the uh, application running and uh, if we if you open an application basically you move the application from your hard disk of your computer to the ram to the memory so if you have big memory this means you will be able to run more than one application at once your computer will be uh, fast in performing the different tasks so memory is area for holding data for holding instruction and information. Memory can be either RAM or ROM. 
These only two example of memory chips, but we have also cache memory. RAM will hold the data and the programs that will uh, be needs to be processed by your uh, processor, by your CPU. Before that they can be processed uh, by your CPU, it's need to be moved into your RAM. RAM is very near from your CPU. For this reason, RAM is referred to as primary memory. So because it is very necessarily to place any application or any file that you edit now inside RAM, so we call it a primary memory. RAM is temporary or volatile. Temporary means if you are working on a Word document, then uh, the electricity is shutting down. You turn on your computer again, then all the uh, modification you did without saving will be lost because you was working inside the file stored inside RAM or exists inside RAM. If you click on save, then you are moving your application, your file from your RAM to your hard disk. So to the permanent place of storing your uh, files. If you turn off your computer, turn it on back, then your files exist inside your hard disk, the C and D part of your computer. RAM basically, if we said it's volatile, means it will lose everything uh, inside it if have uh, electricity uh, shutting down. So it will lose all the contents as soon as the computer is turned off. Other than a primary memory, we have different types of storage. It's called secondary storage. Secondary storage basically is extra storage. Extra storage that will uh, give you permanent and non-volatile storage, a place to store your files, your data forever until you delete that file, like your hard disk, yeah, like solid state storage, like optical disk. These are basically CD, flash memory, memory, uh, external hard disk. So all these devices, called permanent or non-volatile. This means if you save your file inside, inside a flash memory, you will have that file always there until you delete it. So the secondary storage data and the programs can be retained after the computer has been shut off. Um, hard disk. We will now explain some of the store, secondary storage devices. The most important one is hard disk. This is the uh, picture of the internal hard disk that we can find it inside our system unit. And this one is the external hard disk. External hard disk basically is located uh, outside your computer, but you can connect it to different computers by using USB port. So internal hard disk located inside the system unit store and retrieve large quantities of information quickly. It is very quickly because it's inside your computer. Also, it have fixed amount of storage. So the capacity of internal hard disk is fixed. You cannot increase it. When you buy your computer with uh, one tera hard disk, this means you can store uh, files and applications uh, of size one tera, no more than one tera. Whereas external hard disk will be outside your system unit, you can connect to your computer by using USB board, uh, give slower access than the uh, internal hard disk because it's outside your computer. So it's need time to, um, define itself to your computer, to introduce itself to your computer, and start transferring the files. Also has fixed amount of storage. Uh, it is removable, so we can remove it from our computer. Um, unlike hard disk, 
which basically rotate and have read and write head. So uh, hard disk basically, it's like uh, disk disks above each other to read and write. It's turn around, it's rotate and have a head to read the data and to write the data. This heads move in and out. This is uh, we have another part which is solid state storage device have no moving bars, so there is no disk, no head to read and to write. So this solid state storage, like memory, like flash uh, memory, um, data and information stored electronically, so by electronic signals. Uh, like, for example, the solid state driver, like the flash memory, like the USB flash drives. So this is an example. This is a solid state driver, the driver installed inside your computer to make uh, a specific device work. This is a flash memory card and this is USB driver. Um, then we have the uh, optical disk. The optical disk basically is like CD, DVD disk. Uh, it uses laser technique to read and write data inside these disks. So this, the surface of the CD, it has a plastic or a metallic uh, layer. Then um, we use the laser beam to read and write data inside this plastic or above this plastic and this metallic. Um, we have three different main types of CDs. We have CD, DVD, and Blu-ray disc. The difference between them basically is the size of how much data they can store. CD is the uh, smallest one among them with 700 megabyte. Then we have DVD, which is uh, larger than CD and smaller than Blu-ray. It can store up to 4.7 gigabytes. Then we have Blu-ray disc. It can store more than 50 gigabytes. Uh, where we can use them, uh, DVD basically uh, to store file, uh, movies, CD to store files, DVD to store movies, Blu-ray to archive a huge amount of data. Um, we finish from meeting four. I know I was a little bit rushed. Sorry for this, but uh, I know it's a makeup class and uh, the material also, most of it is definition, uh, comparing between types, which is, I think it's uh, a theoretical information that require you to uh, read and to memorize, to see pictures about this theoretical part. Um, is there any question? Ms. Anand, no, thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Anand, yes. سؤال. أيوة تفضلي. أنا أصلاً كنت أحضر شعبة ثانية مسجلة بشعبة ثانية بعدين غيروها لي فجأة. Okay. So, if there can attendance, I will mark you attend. يعني, don't worry. No issue. أنا أقدر أحضر على الشعبة اللي أنا كنت أحضرها. طيب أنتي ليش ما سألتيهم ليش غيروا لك الشعبة على أساس درجاتك سويتي activity one when سويتيها في هذه الشعبة ولا الشعبة الثانية؟ توقع الشعبة الثانية. هذا أول مرة أحضر هنا لأنه جاني إيميل عشان كذا استغربت. اوكي فخلاص ارسلي لي ايميل عشان اتاكد انت تابع اي شعبه ارسل لك وين على الايميل اللي جاني على ايميلي إيه كم رقم شعبتك اللي انا كنت فيها اول آه اللي انت مسجله فيها اوكي دقيقه يعني اذا كان بس عشان استلمت الايميل ممكن الايميل وصلك بالغلط بس الشعبه اللي اثنين اثنين آه لا فمعناها ما انت معانا احنا 1326 بس أنا شكراً يوم دخلت أشيك على الجدول مغيرين الشعبة بعد خلوها لك 1326 أيوة خلاص رسلي لي إيميل وأشيك يعني أهم شيء حالياً 
انه انت حضرتي الميتنجز وانه الدرجات حقك ترصد لك في الشعبه اللي انت مسجله فيها يعني الحين احضر شعبتي اللي كنت احضرها اول ولا لازم احنا نحضر معك آه لا ارسلي ايميل عشان نتاكد انت مسجله تابع اي شعبه فبيبان عندي انا مثلا اوكي تمام ارسل ايميل لمين ارسلي لي انت ما حضرتي معنا وقولي لي ان انا موجوده في هذه الشعبه وتغيرت الى هذه الشعبه في الجدول حقي فعلشان على اساس ان نشوف يعني ايش المشكله اللي صارت معك لان المفروض انه ما تتغير يعني طيب ايميل نفس اللي جاني اليوم ممكن تدخلي وتلاقي موجود في الام اس تحت اسمي هاله الدحيلب اوكي تمام ارسل لك ايميل Okay. Okay, شكرا. Any other question? Yes, دكتورة. Uh, I want to ask uh, to ask you about the exam re- uh, result. Uh, we found it before when we finished the exam, but now we can't see the result. Uh, because I didn't post it yet. yet. I saw that mark in before, but now it's not available in the uh, You see it where? When you uh, finish. لا لا not direct when we finished after that maybe uh, uh, after two days okay. I saw the result system, now is now it there or no no so uh, because the um, I have to post activity. it on SIS so I didn't done this yet okay. I'm waiting for you ah. to finish activity ah. two because uh, I believe it's supposed to be uh, representing your uh, midterm The midterm is supposed oh. to be 30 marks, so I'm waiting to finish uh, activity two to uh, يعني, uh, calculate it together. Okay, okay, good. Thank you so much. And the other thing, Miss, uh, we uh, after each meeting, uh, I checked in the teams in the chat, and I'm not a participant anymore. It's fine. You close the chat every time, or how? Uh, I didn't I get your point. But you didn't 